Scott for being here. As you just heard a moment ago, it is being reported now that there was a third assassination attempt on Donald Trump. This would mark the fourth assassination plot on Donald Trump that we know of in only the past couple of months. A man was arrested about a half mile outside of the Coachella rally yesterday with a loaded shotgun, a handgun, and fake passes. They say they were fake VIP passes, as well as a phony press pass. I don't know what that means, a phony press pass, but if the guy's not a journalist, something was up. The Sheriff's Department believes that this guy was intending to kill Donald Trump, that he was some kind of sovereign citizen type of some sort. But we don't know for sure. What I think is likely to end up happening is the media is going to report this as Let's not jump the gun. We don't know what this man's intentions were, much like with Ryan Ruth in, uh, yeah. in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. They were initially reporting that it was not an assassination attempt that we learned it, that it was. And this guy actually had some kind of writings and a plan and a pitch to other people. He was offering money should he have been caught. So I think there's a strong possibility it turns out that this guy was trying to take Trump's life. But I do want to be careful because it is very preliminary. The news just broke within the past hour or so. But I do think it shows, as we've heard a moment ago as well, the desperation of, well, just people who don't like Donald Trump. And I'd like to say Democrat voters or liberals or whatever that might mean, but this isn't just one group of people that's easy to identify. It seems to be, at least on the surface, people who have been fed lies through the corporate press and through a political manipulation machine, the misinformation industrial complex, how do we solve that problem? I don't know. It's very difficult, but we try every single day. That's why we do the show we do, and many of you watch. I really do appreciate it. But when you have two coalitions, you've got Robert F. Kennedy Jr. joining with Donald Trump in one of the most iconic photos I've seen in my life. When he shook hands with Donald Trump, explosions behind him. I was inspired. To see Tulsi Gabbard join with Donald Trump as well, I would call this a dream administration. Yes. In 2020... I have been reading articles about the, the failures of Trump's foreign policy, albeit his foreign policy was the best I've seen in my life. And it's a lot of what I had been asking for for my whole life. In the 2000s when I'm protesting in Chicago, the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, wondering what's going on. I'm a teacher. I have no idea what's going on. Barack Obama made promises that he did not keep some. He did. He blew up a lot of kids. That's what he did. He killed, he killed American citizens without charge or trial. And we've never gotten real answers for that. But, you know, I can bring that up and I can mention that, you know, very few presidents are, are, are going to get it perfectly. In fact, I would say nobody does. But with Donald Trump, what do we see? No new wars. It's the first time in my life, and it's kind of scary to think, I'm 38. Every day of my life, there's been a president starting some kind of war, except Donald Trump. In fact, he started pulling our troops out of these conflicts and asking the question why we're footing the bill for whatever this foreign intervention is, nation building. We're going to be there for six generations so that the minds of the children of Afghanistan become Americanized. It's a ridiculous proposal, but at the same time, in our country, we're complaining about roads falling apart, bridges falling apart, a border that's falling apart, pipes that are full of lead and Legionnaire's disease. So in the 2000s, I'm going through all this activism, wondering why these problems are happening and what we can do about them, but I was fairly naive. I'm a kid marching down the street saying, no blood for oil, why are we in, in the Middle East, OPEC, blah, blah, blah. I knew very little. And I started to learn a lot more. In 2016, when I saw Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, I just laughed. I knew what the lies of Obama were. Oh, he made a lot of promises, hope and change. I had all my friends telling me, hey, look, we've been marching down the street saying, no more war, justify this. Why are American men and women dying? What does this have to do with 9-11? And uh, so I said, okay, let's, let's, let's vote for Barack Obama. I remember it. It was uh, 2009, it was January, and I'm reading the internet. One of the first things I see is within a couple of weeks, Barack Obama signs off on a drone strike on a Pakistani village killing 23 women and children. I could be getting details wrong. It's been so long, right? It's been almost 20 years. And I was just confused. I'm like, is this what I was told to vote for? Is, am I, have, I, have I been pounding my fist on the ground angry? demanding answers for what is going on in this country only to become a part of exactly what the problem was the whole time. You tricked me into voting for this? And it only got worse. The murder of Abdul Rahman al a 16-year-old American citizen who was, he grew up in, in Colorado, he lived in San Diego. He was visiting his family in Yemen. We're not at war with Yemen. Can someone explain to me why we, 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 we launched a drone strike to blow up a civilian restaurant in Yemen? I don't, I don't recall Congress declaring war in that country. 
Uh, but perhaps it was because Saudi Arabia is dealing with Houthi rebels, maybe. But I think the reality was Anwar al-Awlaki, his dad, was reportedly a jihadi. And Barack Obama killed him too. He was an American citizen. And you know what? You may think he's bad for being a jihadi. Hey, I'm not a fan. But Americans have constitutional rights. You do not kill American citizens unless you prove it in court in front of a jury of, of their, their peers. And the American people are told this is exactly why lethal force is to be used. And I'm not even, a, I, I disagree with the death penalty, but I believe that Barack Obama killed Abdulrahman al-Awlaki to send a message to the terrorists, to the enemies of, this, uh, of the United States, to the enemy, enemies of whatever the uniparty establishment monster machine is, that if you stand against us, the United States will kill your children without charge, without trial, and with no cause other than to send a shiver down your spine and make you regret it. And that's terrifying to me that this, that this country would do that. Now I'm sure there's someone who's going to make an argument somewhere. Lou Kretkowski famously interviewed a few people in 2012. Man, I remember this. And, I, and he asked a few people in the Democratic administration, why was this, this young man killed? And the answer he got, he should have had a better father. As if that's justification for launching a drone strike on a country we are not at war with, on a civilian restaurant to kill a child. And so I see Donald Trump, and I see Hillary Clinton, and I laugh at it. And I'm like, I am not playing this game anymore. I remember 2008. I didn't vote 2012. I'm not going to walk into this. And so I've been saying, uh, you know, 2016, 2017, I start, uh, I leave the corporate press. I start working on my YouTube channel. And I said every time, ah, I don't like Donald Trump. He's, you know, there's, a, there's decorum, there's attitude, and I'm not, I'm not going to be I'm voting for this guy. And then in 2020. There was a very interesting moment when uh, Trump released his second term agenda, and I read through it. And I had some conversations with friends of mine who were not conservatives, they call themselves classically liberal. And they made some really good points. Donald Trump was getting rid of the woke DEI policies in government contracting, which is illegal. We have, we have a civil rights act in this country, you can't discriminate against people based on the color of their skin or their race. Yet here we are, at the highest level of governments, they're awarding contracts if these companies are intentionally discriminating against people. Oh, but it's okay because they're white, right? But it's not even about being white. It's about some kind of mis misconstrued proportionality. It made no sense. Trump said, we're getting rid of that. And I said, okay, well, we definitely need that. And then someone said to me, well, why wouldn't you vote for Trump being starting wars? And I was like, it's actually a really good point. He said a timeline for withdrawing from Afghanistan, and I said, okay, if you are not going to give a justification nor a declaration of war, our troops come home. And so then I said, well, look, I'd be a hypocrite if uh, I didn't vote for the man now. He's, he's, he's put out a policy platform that I agree with. He didn't start any wars. He didn't trick me into supporting all the chaos. Now, no, he's far from perfect. We had Tomahawk strikes on Syria. We had an increase in drone strikes, a decrease in transparency. But I look across the board and I'm like, yeah, but the Abraham Accords, crossing the DMZ into North Korea to try and, and bring about a peace agreement, whatever you think his motivations are, I do not care. Donald Trump, with no security detail, entered an enemy country, and we are at war, and have been at war, in a sign of good faith for peace. It's brave. And for all of the faults the man has to his character, which I still say many, sure, that was brave, and it was effective, and they attacked him for it, and they deny he did it. So now, you know, I'm looking at administration, which is going to be Tulsi Gabbard. I supported Tulsi Gabbard in 2019 in the primary yeah. because her foreign policy is great. I love it. She's a little progressive on some things. She's coming around on guns. I can respect that. RFK Jr. has hit the health issue. He's hit the nail on the head with the hammer perfectly. And we all know it because we've all been talking about seed oils for too long. And so now we have what looks to be a dream administration. So I think about my time in 2000. I think about marching in the streets of Chicago. I'm 16, 17, 18. Naive young person, but just, you know, I'm angry because they never justify why American men and women need to die, why our tax dollars need to pay for this, and then they expect us just to go along with it. And then I take a look at what Kamala Harris has to offer. There's two different coalitions right now that seem to defy the odds. RFK Jr. shaking hands with Donald Trump, inspirational. Tulsi Gabbard, Elon Musk. I think Elon Musk is doing some of the most important work in the world right now. And I'm not just talking about X and restoring free speech to the best of his abilities. Far from perfect, of course, of course. But also SpaceX. Did you see they just caught the, the ship today? I mean, comes down. I'm 
inspired. And we've got Vivek Ramaswamy, a relative newcomer, but I think one of the smartest guys in politics. He's fantastic. What's the other coalition? Liz and Dick Cheney. Andrew uh, Kinzinger. Uh, who else is it? What, what? With, with Kamala Harris and, and oh, Shifty Schiff. I'm not surprised Democrats are supporting Kamala Harris. I've never been a fan of Democrats nor Republicans. But I like the Libertarians a little bit, but now the Republicans got some, some good people. Shout out to the Libertarians. Now it's actually kind of shocking to me that there are so many people that still believe you're going to get anything different with Kamala Harris. And, you know, I got to tell you, I've had a lot of conversations with people who say, I just, I'm not going to vote for anybody. I can't vote for Trump. And it seems to me illogical. I do not believe that you can be someone paying attention to what's going on in this world to know where the lies are coming from overwhelmingly and then say the, the mathematical equation lies with standing, standing aside and standing back. So I, I've, I've long not been active in politics. I tried to stay outside and say, well, look, I'm, I'm really trying to understand until 2020. And then I started looking at how bad things are getting, how insane things are getting. We can't stand for it. So this time around, I'm here, out of the studio, back outside because we all have to do something. And if there's one thing you can all do here today, this is the question I get asked, why are we here? I have people ask me, we're gonna do this event in PA and we're gonna bring people together. Why? Those people already agree with you. Those people are already active, they're there. I mean, you're all the best of the best. You showed up because you care. Well, there's one really important thing you can do is talk to each other. You all meet each other, you build those social connections, you learn who's good at what, who's located in the right position. Someone might find out, someone's got a print shop, we can make flyers, who knows? It is the connections from organizing in person that make it possible for us to win these victories. So I, I will say right now, there's good news and there's no reason to be pessimistic. Gallup reportedly has Trump up three points nationally, which defies the odds. And maybe, maybe it's wrong. All the polls are always favoring Kamala Harris, but the betting markets also have Donald Trump favored to win. No one knows what is going to happen, so there's only one thing we can do, and that is fight, fight, fight. In the words of Donald Trump, after nearly losing his life, I can say at the very least, I can make the trip out here. I can make sure I ask as many people as possible to be active, to become friends, to meet each other to get registered to vote because we've got a couple weeks left. We can absolutely win and I certainly hope we do. So thank you all for listening to me speak. And for being here.